Welcome to Good Service. We are your hosts, Ben Chung. And Kevin Zha. Each week, we'll be breaking bread and having real, raw, and vulnerable talks about life, faith, and everything in between, and always over a fire meal. Thanks for joining our table today. Let's eat. Folks, welcome or welcome back to Good Service. We are your hosts, Ben. And Kevin. And today we got the homie, we got singer, songwriter, worship pastor, original Jabberwockies member. We got Ryan Ellis in the pod. Let's go. Don't make me do it all right. (laughs) So so let's let's start there, bro. Um, Origins, man. We love getting people's origin stories. stories. So I know when you were getting down with the Jabberwockies, you were young. You were a kid. I was a so baby, bro. You were a baby. I was Take a us baby. back, man. Uh, well, okay, where'd you grow up? San Diego. Cool. So I grew up in San Diego, um, born and raised till I was about 16, but I was, uh, start off cheerleading. That's what I did first. Oh, oh awesome. I was a cheerleader. Mm. I learned how to do a backflip from watching the Power Rangers. Yeah. Oh. And uh, and I was just like, blah, did cheer for, for a minute because um, my, uh, my stepdad was taking pictures for a cheerleading competition and okay. it was an all girl squad. And they're like, yo, you know, maybe your son. And they saw I did backflip, got on the team, won nationals wow. twice. Let's go. Um, and so it was like high elite level, you know, cheerleading. Mm. And then I saw Anna Serraro. She yeah. was uh, yep. teaching class at the YNCA. And um, I just sneak over there and then I started dancing hip hop and then I switched wow. out because it was free. You know, I could come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, or it was like eight bucks back in the day for, you know, Friday class or something. Right. And, and shout out to the Y, that's the YMCA. Yeah, man. Shout out to the y. Mission Valley <laughs> Y, you know what I'm saying? And so, wow. and then uh, my mom used to take uh, hip hop lessons from Angie Bunch at the community yeah. uh, college in San Diego. And so I'd go with her and I'd check it all out. And that's when like the culture was just being birthed, you know, in San Diego, like culture shock. And then I was on the first future shock um, dance team. And then uh, it was just like family. That was my, that was my family. You that was know, dope. that, that hip hop squad. Wait, and how then, old were you when you were dancing? I guess dancing, dancing. I was probably like seven, eight years old. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was <laughs> young. young. I was young. And, then, and, uh, and it was fun, man. I knew everybody, you know, and, and it was cool. Just it was it was like a huge family. And, and it was and I live, you know, I was I grew up poor, bro. We lived in like one bedroom apartment. So mm. I'd just be at the studio all the time whenever I could. And Joe and Kevin, they moved down from the Bay and they were like new Kung Fu masters, you yeah. know what I'm saying? It was yeah. like, what is this, you know, nameless style. And Joe was hit, was dancing, dancing to some NDRE in his parking lot. And mm. I remember <laughs> being like, I've never seen nothing like this, bro. And it was crazy. And I knew right then I was like, everything's about to change. And, um, and they just liked me, bro. You know, they just kept me around. I'd come, this is back when Gary used, you know, yeah. rest in peace, Gary yeah. was around. And I roll up on Gary, you know, like 10 years old, like, hey, teach me an eight count, bro. And he would be like, oh, I'll be back. And he would, he'd yeah. come back and he'd teach me something. <laughs> yeah. And I'd be like, yo. Dude, he was Yoda, man. He, he was, was Yoda, Yoda, bro. And so I really looked up to all those guys. And then when they, and then I remember when Joe was like, you know, it was cool. Cause they were older, you know, they're like 22, 23. Yeah. I was like, maybe 13 at this time, Dang. you know? Oh my God, dude, that's and, crazy. And um, they all lived in a one bedroom apartment and they, they were the first ones to introduce me to Xbox. You know, they were, su- <laughs> they were super into like, uh, um, like Kung Fu, you know, Kung oh. Fu movies. And I got super into it too. And I was like, yo, and that's where I really started seeing into their minds and how they really thought about movement, you know what I'm wow. saying? And, and mm-hmm. just art, you know, and beauty and, and it was crazy. And so I, they were like my big brothers, you know, I didn't have, yeah. you know, a big brother growing up and these homies came in and they'd pick me up, you know, and take me, get something to eat and take me to the studio. And we'd be up all night with the VHS camcorder, you yeah, know, making funny yeah. videos. And then, um, and then, uh, you know, my, my mom, she, uh, she, she, we moved up North. She got, she got engaged, you know, she found, you know, somebody and we moved out of San Diego and, um, you know, but it was kind of like I was I was dancing hip hop and I was doing all this really cool stuff, but I was also like a menace. You know what I'm saying? I was <laughs> I was like getting, you know, I got kicked out of the San Diego school district. I had to like yeah, yeah. sing and dance my way back in, you know, <laughs> to this performing arts school in, in Coronado. Oh and I met with like this the San Diego school district lady and she was like, 
you can't be selling weed. And I was like, I, I, like, I, was like I won't, I promise. <laughs> uh, <you know? laughs> dance, let me back in. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but you know, it would dance was a great escape for me. But then, you know, we, uh, we moved up north to Visalia. That's where my mom met this homie. And, um, I left everything behind. It was kind of gnarly, you know, it was kind of um, weird. It was kind of this weird, like I was, but at the same time too, I was also kind of excited to leave. I was kind of like excited for a new chapter of my life. Mm. You know, I felt like there was at that season, man, there was so, so much going on. Um, it felt a little hectic at the time, you mm. know, it was like mm, after yeah. Jabba got started, we, we did our first couple performances, but I was just kind of like, figuring stuff out. I, I was still getting in trouble a lot, you know, rolling with the wrong crowd. And I just didn't have any sense of direction, you know? And mm -hmm. actually I was doing the dopest stuff, but it just felt mundane. I felt stuck. I felt like I wasn't going anywhere. And so when I found out we were moving up North to Visalia, I was kind of like excited. Cause uh, I like a challenge, bro. I like, you know, mm -hmm. you know, dude, it was a night and day difference, bro. It was like, cowboys and you know <laughs> northern californians you know yeah. like a bunch of mexicans and like cowboys and i was just like matching nikes with my shirt my you know <laughs> and my visor and like like i had no tools for that environment mm -hmm. you know but um yeah i say there's a lot of nothing by the way like my i've never been there yeah my uh my father-in-law had a burger shop in porterville Oh, straight up, Porterville. So I know the area, man. Whoa. I mean, yeah, so you know, yeah, but it's like- It's empty. You, it's wow. empty, it's, it's empty, but- roads Yeah, but grass. they got good people up there. The people, people. the people, people are beautiful. And yes, like, there's yes. like some really cool, like, um, I don't know, you start finding, you know, me and my homies, we'd go yeah. driving the dirt roads, you know, they have like these huge orchards, you know, and yeah. so you're just driving yes. on and stuff and get yeah, lost. Yeah, so. yeah. It was it was like a cool rewiring of my brain of like, you know, city, San Diego, bus routes, trolley routes, you know, practice, da 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 to I'm like walking, you know, with my backpack across this farm to get to my high school now. And it was just like totally different. different. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it helped me, you know, adapt and learn people and I and I and I didn't really get to grow those tools growing up because i lived in apartments you know and i didn't have like neighbors and stuff like that that i really you know and mm. with good family down to earth morals so oh, visalia was really good for me bro I, I still have a lot of good people there to this day i'm actually going up there um october 7th for okay. a show okay. yeah go, so go, go say what's up to everybody but um yeah, I was there for a minute. And so I was, I was, I let the whole dance community. I got into like wrestling and swimming and sports and stuff, bro. And I was like, this is me now. This is what I do. And I was like hardcore still into partying and like just doing whatever I want to do. And then, and then everyone graduated and I was like still, and I left my house when I was like 17 years old. So I was living at my mm. best friend's house, but then he went off to college and I was like, I gotta do something with my life. This is embarrassing. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm like, I got nothing going on. And then I kept hearing my my Filipino grandma's voice in the back of my head, like, you need to join the Navy. You need, to, you know, that's what she would tell me growing up. She'd tell me that all the time. It's like, hey, Ryan, you need to join the Navy. <laughs> that's so funny. And I just, and so I, that's what I did, bro. I joined wow. up. Okay, okay. Joined up in 2006, right after I got out of high school. And then, uh, and then, and then my first duty station, I turn on the TV and who do I see? Freaking Jabberwockies. Oh, <laughs> These homies yeah. were blowing it up. That's and crazy, I was like, yeah. what the heck? But yeah. it's part of the journey, man. That is. Yeah. Hey, before we get into the journey though, okay, we got some bomb chicken wings in Ooh. front of us, bro. Yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. Let me what are we dig into today? the food. This is called Chicken Hut. It's in K-Town. Mad love mm. to Michelle and the team. We love them over there. Uh, the parent company is Prugogi Hut. It's K-Barbecue. But during the pandemic, they had to do more. You know what I mean? Because everything was shut down. Mm. So they created this concept called Chicken Hut. And it stayed around since then. Wow. So even though it's K-Barbecue, inside there's a small section just to eat this delicious chicken menu oh, for to-go okay. and to eat in the store. Amazing. So you got your traditional... Uh, original chicken, fried chicken, Korean style. Wow. We have the soy garlic and we have the sweet chili. And of course mm. we have some side dishes on the side. Uh, the family out there does a really great job. So shout out to Chicken Hut, we love y'all. Um, and they actually sponsor this food. What? 
I know. They hooked Damn. it up. They hooked it up. Hey, chicken hut, we love y'all. <laughs> <laughs> extra shout out. Yes, podcast. extra, we extra love shout you. out. We love you. And so let's let's dig in. Let's grab Sick. us a couple pieces. Yeah, okay. Let's okay. get some good crunches. Uh, get see some, here. you know. Let's see how it goes from here. Get the original. Ooh. Yeah, right here. Thank you guys, man. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, yeah. bro. We love food. breaking bread and having good combo. So, okay, um, so dance, so you went to the Navy at a at a high school. Yep. Um napkins. Yeah, let's get those napkins. Did you um like where like where did God come in your life? At, at what point was there like a a God moment? Well, I didn't I grew up not going to church, you know. My mom, she grew up uh, Catholic, so I think hmm. you know she, she, she basically was just like, you know, you guys, you know, we'll figure it out. And she didn't want to push anything on us, so we grew up not really going to church. And then I didn't go to church for the first time until it was with Anna. Anna brought me oh, to church, bro. Wow. Okay. And um, and Joe too, and Kevin. They mm -hmm. were, that's when they were all going and. And uh, Justin Vaughn, you remember Justin Vaughn? Yeah, yeah, bro. We Shout called out. him Jay Vaughn. Jay Vaughn. Yeah, yeah. And um, and so that's when I was like, oh, this is dope. This is church, okay? You know, Pastor yeah. Miles, the Rock Church. When oh, he went to at, the Rock, okay? Yeah, yeah. when he yeah. was at SDSU, and mm -hmm. and so that was my first encounter. It was a Good Friday. The Katinas were playing. Mm. I was like, whoa, look at the brown boys, you know? And I was <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and it just hit me, bro. And it just really was like my first. I was probably like. 14 years old when I was like, there's gotta be something more than this, bro. You know, it's not just wow. me down here trying to figure it out. There's mm -hmm. something, and it was kind of like an awakening, you know? And then when I was in the Navy, um, you know, I, so, I, so I had that encounter when I was like 14 years old, tried doing Bible, you know, did Bible studies, all this stuff, moved up North to Visalia. And then that kind of all went out the window and I was just doing my thing. <laughs> and um, then I joined the Navy afterwards and I was still doing my thing. and almost got kicked out of the navy and just like you know wow. i was just a knucklehead you know and so mm. i uh i get this text message from my mom you know she's she's sending me bible verses now and mm -hmm. i'm like i'm like oh what is this you know i haven't talked to my mom in like two years you know we left on bad terms and mm. i joined the navy to just get out of dodge you know i was right. in my cellular bro i was like what am i gonna do <laughs> it was like i can't be stuck here so right. i got in the navy was you know stationed in boston and i was just kind of wilding out and again my almost got kicked out and then the text messages are come bible verses and i'm like what is this delete 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 and i just like you know it just gets kind of it's kind of annoying at first right. you know we you, you know things something wrong with me and anyways and then it just started the inner conversation started happening and it was like you know what maybe you need to do this bro maybe you need to give god thing a try and like see what's up you know it's like you know get your life together bro and mm -hmm. so i kind of came in with that where i was like i'm I need to fix some things up. Maybe this homie can help me out, you know? And and so then my mom, you know, she I call her up. I'm just like, you know, I'm like, hey mom. And she's like, you know, I want you to start doing these Bible studies with this man I met on ChristianMingle.com. I'm like, what the heck? I was like, oh. so this is why I don't call you no more. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, like, yeah. But I was, you know, but he got his master's at, a, at Biola in apologetics, okay. which is like the defense for the Christian yeah, faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, let me just see what's up. You know, I'm gonna throw everything at this homie that I can. And he, um, and he squared away, bro. This homie was like celibate for 20 years, like dialed in. Like mm. he starts speaking about the Bible, bro. And it's like, you know, the living word, how it talks Ooh, about the living word, bro. Yes. It's inside of him. It's coming mm. out and he's prophesying, doesn't even know. He's talking about Bible verse. He was like, I was reading and, you know, second, I, and I'm like, uh, this is my life, you know, like, <laughs> it's just crazy, you know? So I was really mm. learning a lot from him, just his discipline, his passion for for the word. And, and that really inspired me and stirred me on, you know? So I was doing Bible studies with him over the phone. And I was getting really into it. I was like, all right, this is life now. You know, God, if you real, get me back on the West Coast because I'm right. stationed in Boston. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in the Navy. I got four more years, you know, what am I going to do? And uh, and so I got, you know, I got some courage and I prayed. I said, God, get me back on the West Coast because mm -hmm. I heard my mom would call me up. I'm in Boston. My mom would call me up. She's like, your brother's missing. I think he's hanging out with these kids. Da, da, da. And I have to call people, you know, and try to find him, yeah. you know. And so I was like, get me back on the West Coast. Yeah. Uh, wherever I'll, I'll get my brother to go to church you know 
Six months later, I get stationed in Port Wainimi, which is Ventura, California, mm -hmm. back on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. But not only that, but the dude that my mom met on ChristianMingo.com lived in Ventura County. Wow. She moved from Visalia all the way to Ventura, and they were mm -hmm. 10 minutes we away. We see you, God. You, you see know that? what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we see he you. He answered prayer, bro. And for wow. real, yeah. family was 10 minutes away. I was getting discipled by this homie now, going over for breakfast. My brothers got saved, start going to church. Whoa, He's playing the cajon. On. I'm playing guitar now. <laughs> Come on. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like this. But you know, and that's that was kind of my journey wow. into, okay, well, this is Christianity. Like, but that's kind of it was what was being fed to me. You know what I'm saying? It wow. wasn't this like, mm. and it was in that season too. It was like not, you know, not that much later. You know, cause now I'm in it, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm deep in it. I'm reading the Bible. I'm like inviting Mormons in my house. Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> I was like, oh, you guys wanna knock my door? Come on inside. I got, you know, like, let's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. let's talk about this, you know? <laughs> right, right. And my heart wasn't really there. I was kind of like more, you know, just a noisy gong, I think. Cause I, I, now I knew the truth, but it was like, I had not really experienced love, you know? So everything was just, it was interesting, you know? And I thought I was doing good, but, and, um, and so I was kind of, I was, I was interesting for a season, you know, a lot of my family members and a lot of people I knew, because it's like, you know, when you feel like oh, I got the in, you need to be doing this, you know, you mm -hmm. need to, and so much we get, we get it and we want to give it away so fast. We want to come off, you know, and it was like, uh, it took me many years, you know, to learn that that's not. That's not like a good way to do it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's yeah. not a great way to do it. You know, it's more, you know, love, you know, Love is, what's the first thing it says? Love is patient. patient. Yeah, yeah. And mm. you can't be kind without being patient first, you know? Uh, and, yeah. and you can't hold no records of wrong without being kind, you know what I'm saying? Right, so it's like- Right, that's good. So I had to kind of like go through that season. The only way you go through that season is by looking like a fool. So I was just like Bible thumping homies. And wow. you know, it was funny because I went and I actually, uh, I didn't have a relationship with my dad for like maybe 12 years, mm -hmm. you know? After I was 11 years old, I never saw him again. And um, and then I got into the Navy, he reached out and he was like, I heard, you know, you're in the military and I just wanna say I'm sorry. And it was like the first week of when I was uh, like, all right, God, I'm gonna do this thing, you know? Right. And then I saw this email and like everything in me, my young, you know, 11 year old kid came out and he's like, no, F this on me, da 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 da. And then I just, and then I heard the Holy Spirit and it was like, you know, the first step to being a Christian is forgiveness, right? Mm. And, and so <laughs> I call this homie up and I'm like, all right, dad, you know, it's all good. And, you know, and, and then I go meet him. And it was funny because the first time I met him, we both got super jacked. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the Navy, I was yeah, like, right. and I was pumping way. And then I was like, I'm, I'm looking beefy, you know? Yeah. You know, and, I, and there's something in, you know, like a young kid that doesn't see their dad, like, you know, there's like one, I want him to see, that I'm a freaking man, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. also I'll I'll whoop his ass. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna, you know, just in case, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I met him, and he was yoked. He was like yeah, big too. Yeah. He was like, I was like, oh man. I was like, why are you yoked, Dad? Yeah, What's going he, on? Because he thought doing? the same thing too. He was like, if this homie tries to beat yeah. me up, he was scared. You know. You guys just working out to meet each other. Straight up, yeah. and but it was beautiful, man, because it was like. Um, so I saw the difference, right? So during that season, I first met my dad. I was like, yo, come to church with me. Come to church with me. Come to church with me. Read the Bible. I'll be out early, 5 a.m. Because I got out of the military in 2011, and I lived with my dad for a couple, for like a year. I felt like the Holy Spirit said, go live with him. He offered, I mean, it was dope. And um, I had just got back from Afghanistan, too. I did a year in Afghanistan. So it was really nice to kind of be with my dad. He, was, he served in the military, too. Wow. And so... I was there, but I was on another level. I was just like, come to church, dad. And I leave a Bible out on the table. So like, look at it, you know, and just weird stuff, bro, for real. And I was just trying too hard. And then, and, um, and then finally it was like this weird thing started happening. I started really getting into worship, you know? And so for like years, I didn't do music. I did music all growing up. And, uh, and it wasn't even something I did while I was dancing. You know, I did like musicals and stuff, but it wasn't like, oh, write a song or, I remember one of the first songs I ever produced was at uh, Joe's uh, apartment. Really? Back in wow. the day. Yeah. And um, on Fruity Loops <laughs> and uh, <laughs> on the demo version. Yeah. And I remember doing it and he was like, dang, bro, you got it. I was like, 
It's great. And, but Were that, you self-taught or did you? Just self-taught, self-taught, you know? My mom got me a guitar and I just started playing when I was young. I think when I was like maybe seven years old, she bought me a guitar and um, wow. and I just listened to songs on the radio and I go try to play them. That oh. you know, be like a, it was like a it was like a game to me. Like, yeah. How fast can I pick it up? So so it was like kind of interesting after I got saved. You know, I'm going to these worship sets and I'm seeing worship. Mm. And I'm seeing the worst, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, if you're a dancer, bro, you love dancing mm-hmm. and you go in and this is the worship team. And it's like, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, you're like, what is this? You know, who's uh-huh. really in charge of this? And, and, and I get it. There's people that it's the heart for the Lord, but I'm a creative, you know sure. what I'm saying? And, Oh, so you were listening to worship and you were like, this isn't very good. Is that what? <laughs> oh, just, I get it. I'm like, I what? Just, <laughs> I mean, I just felt too. Yeah, it was like I just felt like there's more. There's something oh, more, you know. Yeah, they're like, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, the homies. Yeah. They're like, uh, yes, isn't our God yes. an awesome God, guys? Yes, our God is an yes, awesome. Yes, you yes, know, yes, there's nothing yes. wrong with that. Not, I'll probably but, do yeah, that tonight. I'll probably yeah, do that. It's a good segue. But, yeah. but I was, but, but I was missing the. Po- I was missing the intimacy. Honestly, right. I was missing the intimacy. Yeah. And I just didn't know how to say it, and I was like, I was burning in my belly, you know, and. Um, and so I kind of just, you know, I started writing some songs on the guitar um, and it was fun, you know, because my mom's listening. I'm with my brother now and we got my stepdad. And I was like, again, I grew up in a broken house, like mm. dirt poor, single mom, living on welfare, like taking care of my brother while my mom's working late. And now I'm like in my 20s. And I got my mom there, my brother's there, my new stepdad who loves God, and we're like singing songs about Jesus. Like, mm-hmm. it's kind of unreal, right? But I was like, I just, wow. you know, but then there was this moment again, and I was I was pretty good, I was, but I was in a different headspace. And then I met this homie and he was talking about the Holy Spirit, you know, and he was, we were on a night hike and he was talking about speaking in tongues. And, um, and I was like, well, you got to be careful with that, bro. You know, what I mean? <laughs> and he uh, was like, "You need yeah. an interpreter." Yeah. And he was like, yeah, 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 "And he's yeah, like, yeah. rules are I set." I mean, buddy. this homie looked like. Yeah. I mean, it's like a movie, bro. This homie guy, his, his, he looks like Seth Rogen. He looks like <laughs> Seth Rogen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The hair, yeah, 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 and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. he was wearing a tank top and and flip flops, <laughs> and he's got an acoustic guitar. He just came from YWAM, okay, you know. Okay. So Youth with the Mission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, these YWAM cats, yeah, we man. We got a lot of YWAM homies. <laughs> Yeah. Right, and yeah, it's like yeah, we're doing it, a night hike, it. and we're all of a sudden this homie's talking about speaking in tongues, and he's talking to my brother. So I, again, I'm like, I'm not gonna let my my brother get bamboozled, you right. know. And so I'm waiting. I'm like, you need a you need an interpreter for that, bro. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, you just need the Holy Ghost, and uh, and he's and he's like, you just need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, oh, so there's two baptisms, you know? There's one by water, and there's one by whatever you're saying. And he was like. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, man. He's like, I pray for you to get the Holy Spirit. And I, oh no, because like, why go? I was like, so what? You think you could baptize me in the Holy Spirit? And he mm. was like, yeah. And then it was on, bro. I was like, oh shoot, my brother's there. There's uh-huh. a couple females there. You okay. know what I'm saying? I was like, my boys and it's a Jesus fight, guys. It's a, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> what did you say? And, I like, <laughs> and so I just like I said, all right, let's you know. I said, go for it. And then he put his hand on my shoulder, and I remember praying. I said, God, I go. If this is not of you, I go, if this is of you, um, give me peace. And if it's not, protect me, you know? Mm. So if this is of you, I trust you. If it's not, you know, protect me. Yeah. And as soon as this homie start, put his hand on my shoulder, it was like, zing, my whole body lit up. Really? Lit up, bro. Wow. I'm the homie inviting more Jehovah's Witness in and like, <laughs> you know, and right. I'm like the Benny Hinn people, like yeah. I'm trying to take them out, you know, right. and this is happening to me. Whoa. And I'm standing there, my body's getting lit up. He starts speaking in tongues mm-hmm. and he starts speaking in tongues. I'm starting to interpret the tongues in my oh, head. No way, bro. That's crazy. I've actually, I have so many questions about, because right. I hear about people who speak in tongues. Oh, I'm like, man, I've never dude. met a single person who says that they can interpret tongues. So this is dope. I mean, it was just like, it was this awareness, mm. wow. the awareness of the Holy Spirit, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, and he was reading my mail, bro. He was telling me everything, you know? And, wow. and I was just like, and I was literally having to lock my legs because I was like, I was in my head, I go, I'm not about to fall over right now. <laughs> yeah. Bro, you cannot fall over yeah. in front of all these. Wow. And I was, and I resist, you know, and I, yeah. and it was that powerful, man. And it was like this uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit. It was an anointing, yeah. you know, it was, and then 
he taught me how to lead worship. We wow. started doing worship together, me and him. And uh, we were talking, and this is the thing, this was back in 2011, right? So I had just gotten out of the Navy. I couldn't even get a job because I had no experience, you know? Mm, right, um, right, right. Even though I was decorated, bro, I had Navy achievement medals. I was like, on paper, I'm Gucci as a sailor, you know? Mm. But this was back in 2011, you know? And, uh, and so I got out, I couldn't even get a job. And so I was basically just working for the Lord. You know, I said, all right, God, this, I felt it. And I, I understood, and I like, I got it then at that moment, you know, like, mm. this is me and you, you know? And you've seen everything I've done mm. and you still love me and you still trying to rock with me. And it's like, and, and it's like this relationship, it's like, uh, it's like how I look at my son, bro. You know, I see my son be doing something, I catch him and he's like, yeah. oh, and I just kind of smile and shake my head like, don't do that, bro, what are you doing? You know, like, or, <laughs> yeah. or you know, I, you know, but it's this, this kindness, you know? And um, yeah. so there's that freedom that I got and I was like, okay, well, let's do this again, bro. Cause I felt something, you know, is that like what, you know? And I said, well, I'm just gonna try to create this for other people. You know, this is the real, this is what I, you know, I thought this debunked everything else, bro, because it was real, you know? And, mm -hmm. um, and so we're talking about revival, me and the Southern homie, we're talking about the California revival that happened in the seventies, right. you know, everything that happened, Jesus movement. And yeah, then I'm yeah. putting all these pieces together, bro. Everything that happened to get me here at this moment, everything that happened to get that homie there at this moment. And then we just start worshiping and this coffee shop owner comes up and he's like, Hey, I actually got saved back in the seventies and I opened this coffee shop to do worship nights in. Uh -huh. And he was talking about revival, you know what I'm saying? It was mm -hmm. like these real crazy God meetings. And so we started doing worship nights there. We called it Element After Hours. And it was me, the homie who baptized me in the spirit. Uh, his name was Matt Erspringer and then my other homie, uh, Joseph. Wow. And uh, it was us three and we just would go in, bro. And we'd just crazy. give gratitude and sing thanks. And we were listening to a lot of United Pursuit back in the day, the Live from the Banks album. So we just sing tags, bro. Just, you know, worthy, worthy. And then for hours and we drink the coffee, you know, the leftover <laughs> coffee and the leftover yeah. pastries. And mm -hmm. we just go ham. And then it went from three to five to 10 to 20 to 100 to the wow. local pastors coming and then people getting <laughs> healed, bro. Like people mm -hmm. really, you know, again, I came, I was in Afghanistan, bro. I yeah. went to Afghanistan for a year and I was in charge. My first uh, job was looking for suicide bomber that was on our base. Whoa. And every day we have to go set up a new checkpoint and we have to go check these vehicles that come in Jeez, or we have dude. to check these IDs. And the MO of this homie was blowing up facilities. So every day I'm thinking I'm gonna die, That's right? Crazy. Every day I'm thinking, oh, this may be the day I'm gonna get blown up. So when I got hit with that Holy Spirit, it was like, I'm like, mm. this is it, bro. This is real. I've, and and it was, it was crazy. And so we started seeing miracles. We saw people with diseases, people with cancer. They come back to say the cancer is gone, crazy. you know? Real crazy miracles. The thing that I was judging all these years. Yeah. And um, and now I'm being a vessel yeah. and mm. seeing this stuff happen right in front living of me. It, living it. And the Holy Spirit's actually mm. moving in these spots. And so that was kind of like, how I got into Jesus. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, man, I'm getting like, I have so many thoughts. So this, like you getting hit with the Holy Spirit, um, cause you are also, you were doubtful, right? You were just like, all right, so you're telling me that you could do this right now. So you were kind of like, challenging, right? I was like, yo, you think about and, and all the goals? And but here's like, the thing though, cause I think for one, like that's dope and like praise God for that. Um, but I also am learning that, man, God is, he's so, uh, I mean, he's created us all unique, right? And uh, we were talking about this kind of recently. I went to this, uh, I went to this prayer training uh, session at, uh, it was at New Song actually, it was like last weekend. And, um, you know, and bro, I have a lot of just like, when it comes to like like gifts of the Holy Spirit, I was on that side of the fence of like, oh, that charismatic stuff, that stuff's not that's not legit, and we got to be careful. Like I was the same thing. Like, oh, tongues, oh yeah, you got to be careful about that, and prophecy, healing. Oh, there's a lot of like scam artists out there. You know what I mean? It's just, that's how I used to just think, and um, and so I, I do. I straight up when I got saved, I I 
was saved at a church that was like cessationist, right? So they're like, oh yeah, the, these, the charismatic gifts have ceased. And I'm just, you know, I'm just a 16 year old kid. I'm just like, okay, I guess, I guess they've ceased. You know, I, I listen yeah. to my pastor. Um, and so I think in my own way though, too, cause like I've experienced healing, like I got healed, right? Yeah. And like, it was like literally like a 12 year old boy played, prayed over my, my torn rotator cuff. And bro, I couldn't even lift my shoulder, like arm like this. Yeah. And then after this 12 year old boy prayed, I'm like, whoa, what? And I'm just like flinging my arms. Or, I mean, it's an, I'm in Hawaii, you know, like I'm on the beach in Waikiki and I'm like, yo, what just happened? And so like, the thing is, I think, man, if God wants to communicate something with you, he will make it very clear and that he does it in different ways. So like the way that you may have gotten lit up may not be how God wants to talk to me or he may not show that to me. And it's not like, um, and something that, uh, shout out Ed Salas, um, he, was, uh, he was saying, it's not magic. You know what I mean? It's not like this magic spell, like you you do you pray this magic thing and it always happens. Like sometimes right. it does, sometimes it doesn't. Like God chooses how he wants to communicate when he wants to show up in however way he does. Cause even as I'm hearing your story, I'm like, bro, like how did you like you you say you were kind of a you know, kind of a menace and you were kind of doing your thing and you got kicked out of school, almost got kicked out of the navy, but then somehow, <laughs> somehow like this dude, you're doing Bible studies over the phone. I mean like you don't do that because that's that sounds fun <laughs> you know like that oh yeah i want to do a bible study with this guy over the phone um it's like god has got to be stirring something in your heart for you to even think that that's something that you want to entertain and then even as you grow i mean as i'm you know hearing your story i, I just keep the word that comes to my mind is journey bro like life is a journey and journey is not linear bro like there's no there's there's speed bumps there's there's slopes and there's you know we, we we get off track god brings us back on track and you know we talk a lot about just our journeys too even as like as believers and sometimes yes there's tragedy that that sparks something you know like god can turn something tragic into something that he wants to make beautiful hey guys thank you so much for listening to this episode so far just to keep it real, it takes time, energy, and resources to produce this pod. If you feel led to, you can support us by donating on Cash App at Good Service Podcast. Any amount, large or small, is truly appreciated. Thank you guys so much. We love y'all. Back to the episode. few episodes ago so we had the homie Shane Shane O um when I first met him uh we just had lunch and he told me his just crazy story about his daughter um came onto the pod and he was talking about it and um there was like this intersecting point where you came into his life you know you played mm -hmm. you played at his daughter's funeral mm -hmm. right yeah. and then like um uh Dave had Dave Dave Gibbons leans over to Shane and was like, "Yo, you know, like he's about to like lose his son too." And uh, bro, I, I mean, if you feel comfortable talking about it, man, like, like it's these things are just not normal things. Like, yeah, my my son's about to pass away. I'm gonna go play at someone else's funeral. Like, there's yeah. like how how did you do that? Like, what was like your thought process in all that? Um, yeah, bro, that's it's wow. crazy. So I have like zero context. So I would love if yeah. you're open to just because uh, totally. as a father, like, you know, I just, you know, I care about stuff like this. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um, so I get <clears throat> I'll just kind of fast track to to that moment. <clears throat> I get, you know, I'm in the miracles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the mm. shiggy. That's what I call it. <laughs> shan -la -kiko -robo -shan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm seeing beautiful things, man. And we're seeing ministries and I get married. I find a wife up in Santa Barbara. There's this ministry called Jesus Burgers. You guys can look it up. But they hey. hand out hamburgers to the college kids. And Sounds like my kind of ministry. Yeah, That's dude. amazing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just super, super low key, but high key. You know what I'm saying? Mm, it's, it's, cool. it's a legendary ministry. And wow. I met my wife there. We get married um, and uh, 
and then we did a little moving around to kind of figure out where God was going to have us, you know, and and then uh, we got pregnant six months in our first, you know, in marriage. And then that was our firstborn. His name was Koa. And um, and I'm like, you know, I got some music out. I've been leading some places and, uh, you know, new song, Dave Gibbons and doing some things. I'm kind of getting my name known. It's kind of dope. You know, it's like, oh, wow, this is cool. And we're seeing some really cool movements happen in Orange County. And um, and then and then uh, and I got like record deal. I'm talking to record labels out in Nashville. I'm getting invited out for writing camps. I'm like, well, this is crazy, you know, and it was like, wow from the coffee shop to Nashville, you mm, know, and yeah. wrote a song, Chris Tomlin uh, cut it, Resurrection Power. Yeah. And uh, it introduced me into this whole Christian music industry, right? For context, how, how long was that time period from that coffee shop to that moment? Uh, so 2011, um, I got out, 2011, I'm baptizing the Holy Ghost, doing coffee shop, 2012 towards the end of two, cause I'm doing that from, two, it's the end of 2011, 2012, towards the end of 2012, I'm in Santa Barbara. See Jesus Burgers ministry. I'm like, this wow. is nothing like, just like the Jabberwockies, Dang, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm fast. saying? Mm -hmm. it's fast, this, yeah. yeah, it's fast. It's like right after, right? God put me in his army. And so I'm like up there and I'm like, this is insane. I go live in a shed, shed life. I live in a shed on the pastor's <laughs> property for nine months, just being discipled by him, wow. me and my wife. We date for two years. I'm there in Jesus Burgers ministry for three years. She was there for six years. And then um, we got engaged. We moved to Orange County. We did house church ministries there in 2016, 2016, 17, we were married. Wow. Mm. So it was, you know, it was, it was a good amount of life that we did in Santa yeah. Barbara, a lot of learning. And you're in a college town, bro, with people who are just, trying to steal your stuff, passing out on your, you know. Yeah, but Santa Barbara is a weird place for sure. From what it's I nice yeah. and then Isla Vista, but it's Isla Vista. Isla Vista is its own thing and its own community. Yeah. But, you know, I learned a lot about grace and love and meeting people where they're at. And then, um, then we got married, had my first, had our firstborn, right? I'm having some success in Christian music. And, and then, um, and then we, and then we moved from Ventura because we moved from Ventura down to Orange County for the first time. And we're living with my dad and my, my son's staying in the closet. You know, it's like, and then my wife comes and she's like, yo, we're pregnant. <laughs> and I'm like, mm. well, <laughs> and I just kind of, it was like, yo, this is crazy, amazing. And then, um, and then God provided, you know, we were able to get a spot. We got a little house, we were getting ready and my wife's pregnant. And then, um, you know, she gives my wife, she does all natural births. So no like drugs or anything mm -hmm. at a home, a birthing center. And wow. her best friend was there and who's a doula, which is a beautiful community. And she gives birth and, uh, and it's a water birth. And so, and I'm there to catch the baby, bring him out. And right away I could see there was something different, you know, just mm -hmm. like his head was a little square. It just, he just, you know, looked like I said, it didn't look like down syndrome. It mm -hmm. didn't look like anything I really seen before. And, and I just kind of, I knew right in my in my head right away, I said, there's something not right, you know? And then yeah. everyone else was thinking, oh, maybe the head needs to, you know, cause sometimes babies' heads get squished when they get pushed out. Yeah. So we just, we we're sitting there and he wasn't latching and the home nurses, um, you know, they said, hey, we're gonna take you to the NICU. We're gonna take you to the children's hospital. So you're taken over there and right away, it's just like, you know, they're, they're all hands on deck. And um, the doctor's like, this might be Edward, Edward syndrome. You know, the ones, that the, the kids that grow up and then they got small heads, but big adult sure. bodies. Sure. Mm, yeah. So I looked that up right away and I was like, oh my God. And they're like, don't look up anything. We don't know if it's what it is, you know? And, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, I'm breaking down, bro. I'm in the hallway. I'm like, this is it. This is, you know, and I'm just, I don't know. And it, I think the thing that's hardest the most, especially when something like that happens, it's like, you're sad because uh, the baby's suffering and it's the, the joy is robbed right away. You know, you don't know what's happening. And then it's like, um, you know, this is going to be hard. You know, I just kept thinking this is going to be freaking hard. And I called my dad up and I was just crying. And, and it was so crazy is God knew 10 years prior that I needed to forgive him so that he could be there to answer the phone wow. when I called it, when I, you know, that night, you know? And he just started prophesying, bro, started speaking life into me and just started saying, you got this, you know, we got this together. God's not gonna, you know? 
And from there it was on, it was like, we were there every single day. Um, we were there first week, just up all night. They finally sent us home and I was just wrestling. What do you do? You know, like, I, you know, what am I supposed to do? I'm used to seeing legs grow, you know? I'm used to seeing cancer fade away. I'm used to seeing the Holy Spirit drop. And I'm like, I don't have faith for this right now, you know? Mm. I don't have faith to see. Cause it's, it's, he's got a cleft palate. He's got feeding too. He needs to get a skull surgery. He's got oxygen. And I'm like, even if I pray for one thing, then there's this. And if I pray for this, there's this. Are you gonna get rid of all of it? Is the mm. whole thing overnight, you know? And I remember sitting there at home and, um, and I remember God, you know, spoke to me through this movie, you know, and it was this Christian movie. And I don't even watch Christian movies like that, but I got home and I'm zoned, bro. You know what I'm saying? I've been at the mm. hospital all week up 24 hours, my son, you know, and I'm just like a zombie. And I put on the TV, I see some movie, I click on it and I'm watching it and, uh, it's about, and it's about the Apostle Paul. And they're talking about Rome and how Paul's asking us to love the Romans, but they're killing the yeah. Christians, right? Mm -hmm. And Timothy's like, how do you expect us to love these homies? And then Paul stands up, you know? And, uh, and he goes, love is patient. Love is kind, you know? Holds no record of wrong. Endures all things, hopes, all things to the end. And I didn't need a miracle. Mm. I'm the miracle. Well, amen. That's the miracle. That's what God showed me was that's the miracle is consistent love. Amen. I don't need the, the homie doesn't need to be healed. Maybe there's to him, there's nothing wrong. Mm. To him, that's his normal. That's it. He doesn't know what it feels like not to have all those things, but you know, I'm his dad. And and that's the miracle for people, I think, sometimes in, in situations like that is, can I be love? Can I meet them where they're at? I'm not going to pray for the miracle yeah. because then that means something's wrong with you right now, mm -hmm. you know? And I don't need to be like that all the time, you know? And so, yeah. so mm -hmm. things start changing, you know? We were just present and then COVID hit, you know? Right before, huh? Oh, well, it was like a little bit before, right? So we're like, we're things are. It's like in the middle of this whole thing, right? Like people are shutting down. People are kind of people are getting sick left and right everywhere. And then, um, and we get to his year birthday, and we're like, oh wow, these homies thought he wasn't gonna live past a year, you know? And and we're doing the whole thing. We got oxygen tanks being delivered to the house. We're seeing seventeen different specialists, a, a you know, a week. But we're charging, we're going to the beach, you know, and we're representing, we're, we're the special needs family. And it was dope, you know, it was like, this is Asa, you know, he's our son and he's here for however long, we're gonna rock it out. And, um, and the real one stayed, you know, a lot of people dipped or a lot of people didn't say anything, you know? Yeah. It wasn't until I got a song or like, I, you know, I had a song that was charting and I had homies wanting to hit me up and they're like, hey, I'm sorry, I never reached out about Asa, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's like people like that, mm, you know, yeah. all of that in the, right. in, and so it was just me, my wife, Koa and Asa. And, um, and we had, you know, my dad was there and helping out however people could, you know, but it was really hard because his immune system was so low, like it was so weak, couldn't yeah. have people around or else he'd, you know, get sick and he'd be back in the hospital. So your birthday comes around, we get a phone call from the hospital from the doctors and they say, um, Asa's heart is failing. So the syndrome that he had was called SCS, it's a say to chosen. And it's basically a, like one of the rarest, you know, genetic disorders you can have. It basically means like not everything got developed all the way, you know, mm. uh, he had a, a heart, like he, he didn't have a soft spot. So they had to cut his skull, take oh. it off, form it, put it back on. There was, uh, rods that sticking out of his head that we had to screw with the screwdriver so that his forehead could grow out with his brain. Um, you know, and that was, we were there, bro. I was just in it, you know, cancel the outside world. This is it. I started going to the gym. I lost 60 pounds, wake up at five o'clock in the morning. I run six miles. I do as many pull-ups and sit-ups and push-ups, lift dumbbells, get home, see how I can suction this homie, see how I can help. You know what I'm saying? And, right. and I just went in and then, 
had his year birthday. And then the doctors were like, um, the heart, you know, operates off of four pulmonary veins. He was operating off of one. The others had kind of just fizzled out or disintegrated, or I don't know. And, um, and so his body was shrinking now. And so he couldn't really, I mean, he was, his body was overworking. So he's getting really, really skinny. And, um, it was weird just seeing our baby, you know, uh, like those pictures of the concentration camp kids, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that, bro, in real life. And, and then, you know, I get this phone call about this funeral, you know, and, um, I said, yes, it was like two weeks before, you know, this event had happened, but so you know, the, the, the night, this one night, Ace is up all night, you know, and he's, his alarms are going off and his oxygen levels are off and we're trying to soothe him. We're giving him, we're giving this homie um, um, medicine, you know, and all this different type of stuff to try to ease the pain, morphine. We're giving him morphine. And, uh, and it's like 4.30 in the morning. And I remember looking at the clock and being like, dang, I gotta be at this funeral. I'm like two and a half hours, you know? And I remember thinking about all the ways I'm like, I'm gonna get out of, you know, my call this homie up. My son's been up all night, bro. Like mm, wow. he's turning colors, you know? Right. I don't know, if, you know? And, uh, and I was sleep deprived too. And, and I just remember the voice being so loud, you know? Like the same one, the one that told me to do, you know, worship nights in a coffee shop, the same one that said, this is your wife. The same one that said, you know, all these things. And he said, this would be a fresh offering. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we only got a certain amount of time here on this earth, you know? And uh, sometimes, you know, God knows that's for me, you know, so that gets me for some reason, leaving a legacy, being, you know, I remember reading the Bible when I first read it and being like, I'm gonna be like these homies. If I'm gonna do anything, I'm gonna be a Bible character, bro. I'm gonna try to be a Bible character. Yeah. So I'm gonna do, you know, I'm gonna do whatever it looked like, you yeah, know, yeah. worship nights in a coffee shop, standing out in the parking lot of Calvary chapels, praying over there, you know? Mm. I was doing the most, you know? And then, but that was like, I saw the picture of the family and I saw them in my brain. I said, if that was me, what would I want? You know, mm. who, you know, if this homie dipped out on us, I would, probably be broken you know and yeah. so i just mustered up bro I just got ready went to the thing and it was god because as soon as i walked in i saw the picture of Laura, and i just broke down i started weeping i hadn't really wept like that during that season that year my son was alive you know i kind of held it all back and i just because yeah. you had to keep going and then i went there and i saw that picture and then um and i just let it all out and then i you know I sang um, the song called Heaven, um, and it goes like, I'm in two places at one time, one time, my head is in heaven. And, uh, and I just gave him a big hug and um, went home, and I saw my son was like gray, totally different Jeez. color, you know, full face oxygen mask. And, um, and I remember my wife it was like, it was like she was in the spirit, bro. She was getting things ready. She was, she was ordering, she was doing all these things, getting ready for something to happen. You know, like she knew, she knew more before I did. Mm. And, um, and then I, and then I kind and then my spirit caught on and I was like, and then she goes, well, this might be it, you know? And I said, well, what, what would we want to do if this was the last, you know, 50 years from now, we look back at this night, what do we want to do? And I was like, well, you know, let's put some worship music on, let's light some candles and let's just vibe it out, you know, and just hold him. Hmm. And so we got him out of the crib. We put on some worship music. One of the first songs that come on was my best friend, Mac Montgomery, who, who up in Santa Barbara was my, you know, taught me about worship and everything. And me and Cassie's really close friend. It was just like the presence of God was there, man. It was thick. And then my wife started praying over the baby and, over Asa and was thanking him, saying, thank you for choosing our family. Thank you for fighting and you did so good. And, and she, uh, she said, you, you don't have to 
you don't have to fight anymore. You can go be with Jesus. Mm. And um, you did a good job. And he took five breaths and he passed right there. Right after she said that, bro. Right after, you know. And that has always been something I look back at and I think is a gift because I could have been anywhere. I could have been at a show. I could have been down the street, could have, you know, and God gave us that. And, and coincidentally, my son was being watched by my dad, which, you know, which was totally random. And, and I called my dad, I'm like, yo, I think, I think Ace is heading out. And he, and he rushed over, you know, and, and uh, we got a picture, all of us sitting there holding him. And my dad came in and he just started prophesying over me and my wife. He started, he was like, he was the voice of the father, you know? And he was mm-hmm. like, you guys did such a good job. You guys loved him well. And, uh, you know, it takes time. You know, I always, I always wanted a relationship with my father, you know? And sometimes it takes a long time, you know? And that's what I've learned in all this is like God's process is God's process, you know? And uh, you just gotta make the best of the moment. And you gotta just love the people that are in front of you as much as you can and not let all this other like bullshit divide you. You know what I'm saying? It's like time is short and the game is love. Can you love? Mm. Damn. Thank you for sharing, man. Yeah, man. I mean, like, as a, like, it's, it's hard to listen to. I know we shooting this thing, you know, and, I, and I'm trying to like keep it together. Just listening, dude. But, but this is just what I feel. So I'm just going to, you know, feel what I feel, you know, cause God love broken people. I, I'll tell you that much because I, I, I interview, we interviewed tons of people and when we get to meet people in the rooms and the Bible studies, and I see people walk in and I see what they're doing in their lives and where God has them, right? And what I love to see is wherever they came from, the more broken it is, the stuff that they're doing today is wild. Mm. Like, it, it like it honestly makes no sense. You know what I mean? Like, it's against what the world says, right? Oh, you're broken, you're trash, you're nothing, right? But Jesus loves broken people. And that's something that... I've I've got to appreciate just meeting folks like yourself and just like the fact that you get to just be open and share. I appreciate that because um, even for me, the part that's beautiful about this is the redemption story that as people are listening to, because, you know, not a lot of people have that relationship with their dad. You know, um, I didn't grow up with the father. And so like, he's back in my life today and it's super confusing. <laughs> right. and, and you know, I'm trying to figure it all out and you know, I'm living through it. But this, listening to this as someone that is a father, cause I have sons too, right? And so, you know, I get to li- live that redemption today. I get to get that gift today with my two boys. And um, just listening to this, it's like hard to just like, and I'm just listening and I'm just seeing so much beauty in it. And that's what brings the tears. It's not just like the mourning and the grief, it's it's the immense gift. Mm. And even in the moments that you're getting emotional, it's those moments of the gift. Mm. And I see it, I see the, I see God just talking to you as you're saying your story. And it's beautiful, man. Yeah, thank you, bro. Yeah, I feel like, you know, the thing, you know, we were talking about the charismatic community earlier and like how it's hard, you know, in a lot of ways to kind of, yeah. but the thing that I felt like it really taught me was faith, you know? It was, hey God, this homie's rolling around on the floor. You know, I had so many people try to come up and they're like, we're gonna pray for healing over your son. We had a, yeah. somebody message, we're gonna pray for them resurrected from the, you know what I'm saying? People are <laughs> yeah, bananas, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah. Banana yeah. sandwich, <laughs> yeah. unfiltered. What yeah, they think yeah, they can yeah. say to people <laughs> yeah. that are hurting like that. Mm. And yeah. 
Thank like, God that I'm like a real one. And I'm like, <laughs> I just see it. I'm like, bro, you just don't get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I, I see these yeah. comments and, and they do hurt, but at the same time where you see, you know, people, you know, but the thing is, it's like, that is the gift that you're like, you're saying the pain is the gift, the redemption, wow. having people, you know, like my dad being there, I see all these beautiful things. The rest of that night was, you know, pretty wild. I'm all my friends come over and my mom and, and me and Cassie's close. It was like a going away party for Asa and it was beautiful. And the presence of God was there and it was really hard. And, and right. And then you like, you feel like, you know, I think even Shane said this, it was like anybody, you know, nobody can say nothing, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like everything, you just don't know. You don't get it, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, people come up and they're like, you know what? You gotta keep going. You gotta keep, <laughs> you know, keep believing in you. You know, it's like all this <laughs> yeah. positive, optimistic yeah. <laughs> BS where I'm like, bro, you guys need to learn how to grieve. Cause that's a huge part of it. Wow. You gotta learn how to grieve because that's the yep. key. The key Amen. is not the miracle that happened. The key is because what happens more times than not is the miracle doesn't happen. Right. You yeah. know, so how yeah. do you act when it doesn't happen? Mm. And how do you, you know, so I had to, and it took me a long time too. I remember when it first hit, when I was like, dang, I can actually sit with this, this other dad that just lost his baby and I can sit with him and I can cry with him and he feels safe with me to cry with me or like we're, and nobody else know that's, that's something, you know, that I'm, that's my journey with God, you know, and that's, yeah. that's, that's my life now, you know? And so, wow. but now I'm in Christian music, doing the Christian music thing now, you know, trying, and mm -hmm. that's the thing too, after that happened with my son, yeah. I went right in, I signed a record label and I went, I wrote all these songs. <laughs> And then I saw all these other people do it. And I was like, I'm not gonna do that, bro. I'm not gonna prostitute this thing with my son, this thing that I just went through. I'm not gonna prostitute or try to pimp out, you know, a really sad thing. And I get it, you know, Gonna Be All Right was a really good song. And I think I talked about it a little bit, but not a full, and it was a hard balance, you know? Yeah. I could have sent it, bro. I could have been like, my son died and this is how God got us through. And he's, sure. God, you know, is and try to be this, perfect guy mm. but bro i'm in the process yeah, yeah. that's the christian life and i think for anybody Amen. who's a fan of me you know of anybody who's following me i'm not like the guy who's gonna say like i'm here and this is where you need to be i'm gonna say like i'm right there with you bro mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm trying to yeah. figure this thing out too yeah. and this is how god is talking to me and this is my process but you know so i'm bro, thankful yeah. like <laughs> that's the miracle what you just said like the way that you were able to and still are living through it um bro that you getting you processing that level of pain and to not curse god to not be like god what happened like i've been doing all this stuff for you and then this is how you treat me like you could go that route the fact that you didn't and that you praise god and like that's a miracle bro like that's impossible <laughs> that just does not happen and like yeah it's it's funny that you, you you like say like you know pimp out the your story right like like let it be this sort of wow like look at me you know what i mean like look at this crazy way that i was able to um process with god and, and like this is where you need to be because i mean bro like our egos are weird man like, sure, like yeah. we could mm -hmm. somehow just like oh but this is glorifying to god but that still mm -hmm. can pump up your ego because i actually had i was even wondering like like as a christian artist right like i'm sure people are like legitimate fans of you you know what i'm saying and like yeah. and and how you 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 portray yourself how you how you carry yourself and how you move people are watching it you know what i mean and like yeah, man, like as I'm, you know, I, I, it's funny, all three of us here, like we got we got father issues, you know what I'm saying, straight up. Like I, I didn't grow up with, with the dad either. And then, you know, he got shot and all these things that like, that pain though. I didn't know your dad got shot, bro. Yeah, my dad got shot when I was 14. <laughs> and like um, that pain was the thing that God chose as the gift. Yeah. Without that pain, I wouldn't have turn to him and and that's the crazy thing Some, somebody told me that uh well not somebody shane literally said it on the pod he said he said like a blessing from god is literally anything that draws you closer to him sometimes that thing is pain mm. and that if that's a blessing though that's a gift 
And and when he said that, I was like, bro, that's crazy. Cause like, yeah, I have been processing as of this year that like my dad getting shot, that pain that I, I was, that he allowed me to experience was the thing that brought me to him. Mm. And that I'm like, Lord, that's a miracle. I like, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so there's a, yeah, there's definitely like, I feel like a deeper, there's a deeper understanding you can go with God in pain than you yeah. can with success or like fame or being, I mean, the homie killed his own son, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He ki- yeah. Jesus, yeah. you know? And I remember, you know, a little bit after, you know, Asa passed away, I remember feeling like there was this thing, God was like winking at me and he was like, hey, welcome to the club, bro. You know? <laughs> Whoa. And that's and you know what I'm saying it's one on one. It's like nobody yeah. can really understand the loss, yeah. and I'm not going to be a pity party and trying to do. And I get it. And I'm but so now, and again, it hits me, bro. If I'm, I mean, just the other day, it hit me hard. I was just sad, and that's where, you know, that's my daily grind. Is am I allowing God to really dictate my thoughts? Mm. Am I having grace for myself? You know, I was swirling out and I was thinking about, just like we were talking about earlier, bro, you know, it's like good things going on, but then just like, there's like a lot of other things behind the scene that is just like, you know, you feel like it can make the whole thing tumble, Mm -hmm. you know? And you're like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't ever go away. I think, you know, you, you, I think you, you want to do your best. And then you see all these things happen in front of you and you're like, well, why can't I, it's right there. You know, why can't I tap into that? You know, I got homies singing my songs in arenas and songs that I've written, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I'm out here still trying to figure it out. How am I gonna pay my bills? You know, and like, how am I gonna feed my family? You know, and, and, you know, I think the biggest thing is, is trusting God, man, is, is being able to be like, we've, we have history, you know? We got history, we got a timeline. And so that's what I keep doing, man. I just keep day by day, every day, just telling myself, you know, just keep having faith, bro. Just keep believing. Mm -hmm. That's all we can do. We can move mountains with a little bit of faith and a little bit of belief. Faith moves mountains, man. We learn that every day here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Right. Well, so yeah, we could we could talk forever. I know bro. we and, went and we went a little no, low. No, but we could. <laughs> sure, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Every time. Uh, no, that was that was important. That but, was important. Uh, that was so important. As as uh, the name of the show is good service. Yes. Um, uh, everybody has uh, purpose. Everybody has the ability to serve in their own unique giftings. For you, what would you say good service means to you? Good service is. Um, Good service is, is I think when, you know, you can really, you're really intentional, you know, you know what that, you know, you, it's like that person who's like swimming in a pool and you're like, are you drowning? And they're like trying to save them. They're actually drowning them a little bit more. You think you're doing a service <laughs> you think you're doing a good service and you're actually drowning this homie. So good service is just like, you know, it's serving people. I think good service is, is meeting people where they're at, being patient, being kind. And, um, and encouraging others. That's good service to mm. me. Man. That's what's up, man. Um, speaking of service, man, how can how can we serve you, bro? I know you just dropped an EP. Ooh, man. Like, what's going on, bro? Yeah, man, I would appreciate if you guys just be praying for me, you know? Like, I'm trying to figure out where I belong, you know? And, um, and uh, I don't know where I belong in music right now. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make the best music I can, but just be praying that, you know, I get, you know, some vision, you know, figure out what I'm gonna do next. Mm-hmm. Um, and just be praying for our family, you know, I think, you know, go listen to the music, whatever, follow, I don't even know, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm waiting on the Lord. That's what I'm waiting on. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting on God, like I've always waited on him and it's not, you know, cause I can see it's turning into something else and it needs to go back to that coffee mm. shop worship vibes. You know wow. what I'm saying? It needs to go back to the real shiggy. So mm. that's why I'm excited. There, you know, people, this is God right here, bro. This that homie right Jabberwocky here. full circle, you know? And I yeah. remember when yeah. you first came on and when I met you at, you know, Dave's uh, thing and I was tripping out, man. I said, 
Look at God, bro. <laughs> how many years? Almost what? Twenty years? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's how God works. He works in years, bro. He does. He works in years. Yeah. He works in that's years. That's crazy. Bro. You know, I, I do believe this is God, man. Um, Amen. Amen. Dude, as I'm hearing, dude. Okay, for context, <laughs> for people who are listening. Like, yeah, we connected and then, you know, or yeah, we reconnected earlier this year. And then like, bro, you hit me up and you were like, yo, bro, I'm like, you want me to come through and lead a worship night? I'm like, bro, like, in my mind, I'm thinking of like, this dude's touring, he's busy, but like, look, like this is the coffee shop vibe. Like yes, you hitting is. me up and you being like, yo, can I come through and we'll do a worship night? And bro, like when I, I don't know why I get surprised because I'm like, bro, like, why, God, why would I doubt like that you're that dope and, and that you really make people dope like that? But um, I'm just for one, dude. I'm just super humbled and like uh, I know that um, God brought you into my life for a very specific reason at this very specific time. And as we're both talking about uh, the discomfort of these, like, sort of like I don't know what my place in music in dance in the world <laughs> like because you know I, I'm, I'm glad and i'm so thankful that you share that because my, even you telling me that right now i'm like wait what like you're struggling bro because from outside looking in every you just look like you're killing it right that's probably what people think when they have you know somebody that they admire and they follow they're like oh their life looks like they're dope they're killing it but like to to even see your ability to be vulnerable like that and just to be like look i just gotta keep having faith that's it that's all i can do and in that faith man god he promises to be faithful you just said he's he he works in years you know what i'm saying so i hear even what we were sharing before we started rolling i'm like yeah it's been like a transitional season for me and i'm just like, kind of like allowing the stuff that's like difficult to like that stuff is the loudest stuff for me and I'm not looking at like but what is God blessing you with right now what is God building in you around you through you and just because it's not like what you want it to be right now doesn't mean that God's not working so like I just want to encourage you back with that bro because I mean yeah here we were talking about this whole like ah, I don't know it's like kind of discouraging and not to not to minimize that stuff it's true it is discouraging um, but I think it's even in those discouragements, in those pain points, in those seasons of silence that like God says, I'm here with you in the silence. It's not like God's like at the end of the tunnel waiting for you. Like, bro, he's walking with you through the yeah. tunnel. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, dude, this is really just encouraging to just have you here, bro. And your Thank heart you. is, is, is so dope. And, um, Praise God for you, man. Appreciate Praise God. You, and we will definitely be praying. Yeah. And um, yeah, for those who just found this guy, yeah, this guy is amazing. This guy's super talented. And, yes, uh, yes. We love this guy. Um, we're about to eat all this food, so yeah. we gotta go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we gotta <laughs> smash. <laughs> I'm only, hey, look at this. This is sad. It's like yeah. a bird, just a little fish picking at this. We're thing. about to destroy this food. But folks, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you're listening or watching, thank you so much. Uh, make sure you follow us, like, subscribe, all the things. Good service pod on TikTok and Instagram, and uh, watch it on YouTube. We love y'all. See you on the next one. Good service. Yow. Peace. Peace.
Save me. 